Good morning, beloved. The baptism of Jesus has taken on a, a, a big new meaning for me as I've begun to discover more through Encounter Ministries, the classes that I'm taking. Um, everything, everything that it meant whenever Jesus was baptized. Some of it I glossed over in the past, some of it I fully understood, but not completely. So I, I understood <clears throat> that Jesus upon being baptized, disposed himself to receive the Holy Spirit in prayer. And in prayer, the heavens opened, the Holy Spirit descended like a dove, and he received the power from on high. And this was the beginning of his ministry. But one thing that wasn't clear to me before, and I never really thought about, was the fact that the heavens opened up above him, and they stayed that way. Jesus was able to commune with the Father with an open heaven. And he was able to minister from that perspective. God the Father allowed everybody else to hear and to see that Jesus received the power on most, from Most High, and that he was his son, his beloved son, in whom he was pleased, and he was doing what he was called to do. But what they didn't realize probably at the time was that Jesus was becoming a gateway between heaven and earth. And why that's so important for me, why that matters so much for me, is because through my baptism, I have received that same gift. I have the ability to operate under an open heaven when I dispose myself in such a manner that I can be aware of it. Clearly, Jesus expected all of us to understand that we were being baptized into the family of God, that we were baptized and we are to call God Father. When the disciples asked him how to pray, he started it out by saying, our Father who art in heaven. His intention was us, for us to all fully understand God as Father and to have relationship with him as such. One thing I never really thought about was what this relationship totally means. If we look at the story of the prodigal son or sons, we see the one son in the beginning who had no idea what his true identity was as son. And he just wanted the wealth and he wanted to go and he wanted to do what he wanted to do. But we see the other son who also didn't fully understand his identity in the father and the father's love. Because when the other son came back and was willing to be a slave, but the father ran out to meet him and put a ring on his finger and a robe on his back and sandals on his feet and fully restored him into the family again, the other son was upset. And he was upset because he had a performance-based mentality where he was constantly trying to earn his sonship. He was acting more like an orphan than he was a son. And when he stayed outside and refused to come back, come into the party, the father went out to see him, to see what was wrong, why he couldn't restore him into the family, why he couldn't restore him into the party. And he said, all I've done all my life is serve you. And you've never even given me a, fatted, a calf for me and my friends. But the father told him, my son, my son, I love you. Everything that I have is yours. And this is the message that God has for us this morning. My son, 
my daughter, everything that I have is yours. I invite you to live like everything that God has is yours, is at your disposal. To live under an open heaven, to, to see what it's like in heaven. Is there pain in heaven? No. Jesus came to bring heaven to earth, and he passed that on to us through the apostles, through his instructions, telling them, wait for the Holy Spirit, wait to be clothed from the power on Most High, and go and baptize and teach everything that I have taught you. This is our instructions. He taught them to do that with the power of the Holy Spirit, with the ability to commune with the Father, with everything at our disposal. Just this last week, my daughter Lucia, who's 10, fell ill, and she got a fever. I came home, and she had a fever of, of 102 point something. And so I told my wife, let's, let's pray for her. And I, I knew that my wife was going to be up all night with her, you know, checking on her. And so my son was there, and we all came together, and, and, we, and we laid hands on her. And we prayed simply but clearly, Lord, by the power of Jesus' name, we ask you to take away this fever and to restore Lucia to full health. We pray that you would give her a restful night's sleep. My wife felt her head, took her temperature again. The fever broke. It was gone in just a matter of not even five minutes. I came home during the day yesterday, or that, the day after. This was like Tuesday probably. Lucia's out roller skating outside. <laughs> this is the power that we have access to, the power from on most high. We just need to seek it. In Revelations 3, Jesus is quoted by John as saying, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens... I will enter and dine with him. We'll dine with him in a spiritual banquet. Jesus stands at the door and knocks. In love with us. Desiring for us to fully understand our identity. Fully in, and fully living out our inheritance. I want to invite you this morning to close your eyes just for a minute. Jesus is standing at the door of your heart. Will you open? When you do, what is his response? How does Jesus look at you? How does he speak? Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Jesus wants to break into your life. When Jesus breaks in, he wants to build you up, strengthen you, love you. Ask with me, what do you think of me right now, Jesus?
How are you loving me right now, Jesus? Some of us get, get words. Some of us get images. Sometimes we need to ask more. What does this mean? What does this mean in my life right now? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for coming, Jesus. Thank you for knocking. Praise you. Heavenly Father, I just pray that you would help us all to not live in this performance mentality anymore, but to fully grasp what it means to be your son or your daughter and to live under an open heaven with full access to you, your love, and your wisdom. Lord, give us time. Give us courage supernaturally. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen.